six minutes after, <laughs> after five, five o'clock. o'clock. You know, six minutes of, of your life. Every second you talk, you have less a second to live. You're just living your life out. You know that? Kind or, of uh, floating in the air, on the air, on the surfing air, it, in the air, as it were. Well, actually, if you look at it this way, every minute you talk on the radio is actually many minutes left in your life because since you are on the air, the on the air bounces out to the ionosphere, out to the world, out in the space, hits another planet, bounces back <laughs> to about 40 years later. So you actually get mega more points in life as the radio signals are bounced back to a, to Earth you know, decades later. Is that the Unitarian view of uh, the, well, actually, of air? Did you, there's actually a really a good story where all of a sudden these, these people were getting these t- crazy TV broadcasts from the 1950s right, and everything. Right, I read that. Yeah. And they're like, where's this? Oh, this is stuff that was actually broadcast, you know, yeah. years ago, and it's coming back live yeah. now. And so your words are spreading throughout eternity and time. <laughs> Um, it's it's all, it all depends on the way you look at things, Tom. I got a weird it's a text. It's a different kind of immortality. <laughs> <laughs> I got a weird text from somebody. <clears throat> I got a lot of crazy emails. Uh, I'll read one in a second. This is, there's a a lady who is appearing at as James Holmes' attorney. He's the shooter in, uh, in Colorado at the... Uh, Aurora movie the theater. Movie theater thing, yeah. She's in court with him. Then at Sandy Hook, the same lady is one of the parents of one of the deceased kids. What? Uh, and then she appears in Florida. It's very bizarre. Um, why is this lady appearing as both James Holmes' attorney and a Sandy Hook elementary school shooting parent? Uh, and then, Maybe then it, she was looking for um, clients. Well, it has it has then the then the conspiracy thing, which says they work for Homeland Security as crisis actors to promote Obama's attack on the Second Amendment. Right now, you know that that we don't know anything about, but to have these pictures with the same lady in both pictures, but we got to check that stuff out. But let me read one email for you uh, at nine minutes past five, as we. Um, Ride the airwaves into the third hour today on the 4th of January, looking at an interesting weekend. Uh, and um, we've been having uh, an interesting go at uh, Al Gore, uh, Al Gore Zira, the new uh, Arabic pro-jihadi news agency planting its foot in the United States of America in a more significant way. They've had um, some of the field offices. They've had some of their people. We met one of them mm-hmm. from D.C. at the presidential debate over yeah. at Lynn University. Well, he uh, was actually the um, the Washington DC. correspondent, yeah, DC yeah, correspondent for Al Jazeera. Yep, he was such a spy. It wasn't funny that guy. I mean, you know, the the look, and we do the same thing. We send people over there. They're supposed to be one thing. They're they're different, but um, but then we do nothing about it. Here they actually figure out how to defeat the United States of America. Uh, but uh, on Trento Vision with CJ, myself, Mark, right now, we're going to look at uh, we're going to we're going to get off of Al Gore, but we're going to stay on Al Gore because we found out through one of our faithful listeners, Valanda, that. Um, Diane Feinstein. What, what did we find out? That Diane Feinstein's husband is uh, one of the major investors of uh, Current TV, and also will be getting a gazillion dollars from the Qatar government through Al Jazeera. And uh, and Diane Feinstein sits on the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee. Yeah. And she wants to get rid of guns. So yeah. this is interesting. You talk about crony. Very, ca- you oh, talk God. about crony capitalism. I, uh, it, this is this is the basis of this whole administration. This whole copperhead, you know, copperhead. ideology. I mean, it is. It's a, it's a copperhead ideology, and and I'm making a direct reference to, you know, a copperhead who enslaved black people because yeah. that's exactly what they want to do: is enslave the black population enslave America, enslave everybody by putting them in power to give them tons and tons and tons of money while telling you what to do. 
Yes, indeed. I got to read you this uh, this email here. What we're going to do in this hour, um, and you can jump in if you want, 888-565-1470. We're going to bounce around a little bit. We're going to give you a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, all things interesting. Um, I get a lot of emails and uh, a lot of just kind of out there stuff and a lot of um, material about Israel, Mm -hmm. particularly when I send an email out about Israel. Mm -hmm. I sent one out. Uh, on the Nuke Nuke Israel four years ago today, December 29th. Right, right. that was a good one. Yep, sent that out, and uh, I got a response. I won't read any names, but somebody said, you should know that 16 U.S. intelligence agencies have drafted a report that calls Israel the number one threat to our national security and recommends that the U.S. cuts all ties with Israel. What? Ask what Israel has done for the U.S. I can tell you what Israel has done to the U.S. 1967 attack on the USS Liberty. 9-11 complicity. The shoe bomber. Underwear bomber. Control of our Congress. Banks. Media. Educational institutions. The tail has been wagging the dog too long. I think Obama wants to reverse that abomination. I hope he succeeds. Maybe Senator Hagel can get it started. Oh, my gosh. That's mild. That's mild compared to some of the stuff I get. Um, it's usually F you and the Jews, and bah, 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 you know, all that stuff. And then uh, I said, please. But what I typically do is I kind of bring these guys in, right? Mm-hmm. I said, uh, please send me a copy of that report. I want to verify your statement. Right. Okay. Um, next. Well, Tom, to the... To my knowledge, the report has yet to be passed to Obama. Okay, now, now. Oh, now there's a little bit of backlog yeah. on the, this. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is 82 pages and was commissioned by the CIA. You can find out more at. It gives me some link, as seen on you know some site. You didn't site. go to the link on your computer, did you? No, but I went to the site. Um, I have a printout of the article of the article, but the print is so small it may not be good to fax. Send me your fax number. The article is by Franklin Lamb. So I, I looked at a few things. I said, please, I did I did go to the link. I said, please send, resend the link. It's not working. So now I'm dealing with a nitwit, all right? Um, and then he sends the link, and I go to the link, and uh, this stuff is so uh, – that works. I'll check it out. And then he gives me another source. Tom, another good source is – Lots about Israel and the problems and many other good articles you will never see on the mainstream media. You know, we've got to deal with Israel. Uh, this, uh, the Israel, Israelis are suppressing the Palestinians, all, you know, all that stuff. And then I said, look, sorry, I don't have time to search for documents. You tell me exist and I can't find them. I chased down some of your links and they all link to other pages, but this 82-page CIA document that I'm looking for that you tell me exists doesn't exist. But many Jew-hating organizations use the lack of data. It was interesting as I start tracing this. Everybody referred to this document that nobody saw, and they built a story Story around that document. It got worse and worse and worse. I said, but many Jew-hating organizations use the lack of data to spew out their views. I said, that's fine, but they're not based on any intelligence you told me existed. So please send me the original 82-page document. He starts getting mad. Sorry for you, Tom. I'm retired, and I have to find other items on the net. You know. Yeah, I don't, don't have you, time. I don't have yeah. time. I'm, I'm so busy. I don't have I'm, time. So, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm retired, and I don't have time to do this. Go read the Goldstone report, he told me. Right? Then I wrote back and said, yeah, let me tell you about Goldstone. So, you know, on and on and on, all this crazy stuff. But I think we should let everyone in on – it's Hypocrisy Friday here. Oh, boy. We saw Al Gore's Hypocrisy. And now, do you know America? This is a fascinating fact. Do you know America? America watching, America listening at 15 minutes after 5. WNN 1470, CJ, Mike, Mark, CJ, Tom, Mike, Mark, everybody. Uh, Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. (laughs) Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Oh, I thought we were going to make it through the whole day without having to say that. Do you know... Do you know that since 2005, what, what, 
What is the effort right now by the Obama administration and Feinstein and all these people in terms Band of guns? Band guns. Band what kind guns, of guns? What guns. kind of guns? Automatic weapons. And also assault hand rip. assault, and assault and rifles. Assault, assault, assault rifles. rifles. Do you know that since 2005, when the numbers were actually compared, FBI numbers, 2005 to 2011, more murders were committed by blank than committed with a rifle? Knives and baseball bat. Any all non all non non what, what does what does every good carpenter carry on his hammers head? more murders oh in the gosh. united states by hammers than by rifles according to the fbi crime statistics they should have a handle on this more murders by hammers than rifles in the united states of america since they started comparing the two from 2005 to 2011 and you really can't commit suicide with a hammer. You know, I just, I can't. <laughs> Clunk. It's not my weapon of choice well, for, for, for I like I have some a, more statistics if you're interested. Yes. Right here on my phone. Okay. Um, gun control stats compared to the 10 big killers in the U.S. Um, and this is, um, wait a minute. Well, while you're looking, uh, in 2005, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, well, hang on, in 2005, tobacco use, 529,000, medical errors, oh, yeah. 195,000, unintentional injuries, 118,000, I'm rounding off, yeah. uh, alcohol abuse, 107,000, motor vehicle accidents, 34,000, Unintentional poisoning, 31,000. Drug abuse, 25,000. Unintentional falls, 24,000. Non-firearm homicides, 16,799. And firearm homicides, 11,493. According to the FBI, the number one weapon used in violent crimes is a baseball bat. <laughs> Why is there no outcry to restrict baseball bat ownership? Sure. Now the now the the, the key point here is <laughs> this this number with rifles in two thousand five, four hundred and forty five people were killed with a rifle. It's not they're not including handguns. Right. Handguns is how most of those murders was eleven thousand. Right. right. But the effort right now is to ban these rifles. Right. 445 people in 2005, 605 killed with a hammer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and those are the, there's about a 200 uh, murder differential between hammers and rifles every year. So clearly, ban hammers. Yeah. We've got to hammer, do that. No, no hammers, baseball bats, or bowling pins. Yes, those are um, those are deadly. Now, where are we going well, with all this? Well, I just want the yeah. one little comment on it. Usually the, the, the people who track this, believe it or not, this handgun violence is actually the Centers for Disease Control, which makes no, <laughs> no sense whatsoever, you would think. But they, actually they do, and they found that uh, when they're talking about handgun deaths, they're actually talking, they're lumping in the, th the part of, of suicide. Right. And they're also lumping. And accidents. Accidents, and they're also lumping in the... Uh-oh. Uh they're also lumping in death, you know, shootings done by <laughs> police officers so oh. as, as gun deaths. Oh. And like I said, well, 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 well oh, so it's really Not that there's skewed. that many so, of so, so, so whatever number that you're seeing is actually a very much lower number as far as like criminal behavior with firearms is actually a lot less. CJ, you're in the dark over there. I'm in the dark. We just had a light go out, folks, in our studio, uh -oh, but it's, it's flickering it's to come back on. Now, yeah. So um, CJ's in the dark. She's in the dark. CJ's in the dark again. You're in the dark. That's okay. Now we want you to watch this, and you can listen at home on your radios and watch on uh, TrentoVision.tv. We alluded to it a bit earlier, and uh, we're, we're showing the hypocrisy. Of the left, and they're, they're, one of the things we do is we pulverize bad ideas. One of the bad ideas is to be inconsistent in your logical analysis as it relates to anything, 
Al Gore <laughs> and anything with handguns on and the left. And anything with, with Diane yeah, Feinstein. With Diane Feinstein. Yeah. And her husband, Richard Bloom, who we will be taking more closer look at in the days ahead. Um, this is a fascinating little video. Uh, it's a, a PSA, public service announcement, put together by actors in Hollywood who had to say something about the Sandy Hook Newtown shootings and, and really use their gravitas. Does Jamie Foxx have gravitas? Use their gravitas to, uh, to compel America to solve the gun problem. Do it now, Chris Rock. Tremendous amount of gravitas on Chris Rock's part. Well, some ingenious guy, by the, by the name, I'm not going to say his name. Some ingenious guy, because if you see his name and you say it quickly together, it says a curse word. Um, some ingenious guy took the PSA and then went and found movies that each actor was in who <laughs> is on the PSA and showed scenes, the most violent, bloody, vile, horrendous, disturbing murder scenes you've ever seen with firearms on the face of the earth intercut the actor saying stop using guns and the next scene they're slaughtering five people with an automatic weapon and it's the juxtaposition of how they make their money and then how they use their position to tell you not to do what they do to make a living yeah okay? Now we're gonna let you. You don't. You're gonna hear a lot of gunfire, but just imagine with your mind, um, and we'll tell you the site where you can find this. But you're gonna see it on TrentoVision.tv. We'll probably play half of it because uh, it's a it's a repeti- You won't recognize the voices. You may some of them. Some are pretty familiar. Well, see if you can name the actors. Yes, yeah, if you get, I, I probably. Well, I may be a little behind. Well, you, you're gonna see it more quickly, I, right? I have no. I know Jamie Foxx. Okay, go ahead. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. Columbine. <laughs> Mine is right, enough, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Col- Jamie Foxx starts by saying Columbine. Columbine. Okay, that's that's Jamie Foxx. Fox. Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Shooting that's up everybody. Shooting someone in the head. Oh, God. Oh, oh, my, God. oh my God. Oh, Ooh. blood spatter all over. Oh, my God. He said that on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I saw yeah. it. Virginia Tech. Now, who's this guy? I don't know him. Oh, that's uh, Judd, Judd Nelson. <laughs> Judd Nelson. Fort Hood. Oak Creek. But I'm behind you. Oh, that was Jason Bateman. Jason okay. Bateman right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a girl uh, from Saturday Night Live. Uh, what's her face? Newtown. Julia Louise Dreyfus. Yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce, yeah, getting shot yeah, in some it. scene. Amy Poehler. Amy, Amy Poehler. Poehler. That was who I was thinking of. How many more? Oh, just, just riddle of the bullets. How many more colleges? How many just blowing people's heads off and everything? How many more classrooms? <laughs> John okay, Hamm. You understand why people like that? How many more? Laura Gugino. You know all these people. I don't know any of these people. Yeah. Yeah, this, this? Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's this guy here? How many more houses of fake? Yeah, that's gangster style. How many more shopping malls? Oh, oh he's Will Farrell. Will Farrell, yeah. Guy. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. How many more Oh, Sarah parts? Silverman. How many more? How many oh, that's Sarah Silverman. Okay. Enough. Enough. I think that's the, oh, the, um, the, uh, oh, the dancing, director. The dancing girl from... Uh, oh, God. I'm not on the same loop as yeah. you. No, we're... Yeah. Right now, as a mom. Oh, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres shooting guns, yeah. loving it. Julianne Moore. As a dad, as a friend, as a husband. As a wife. That's the PSA part. Oh, <laughs> Jennifer Garner, right? Yeah. yeah. She's nasty. She's shooting everybody. Chris Rock. Chris Rock coming up. Oh, he's he's Chris Rock is like wailing on people. For the children of Sandy Hook, demand a plan. Oh, there he is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, who's there's? Oh, yeah. She's. Oh, I know. I know her. Who is she? Oh, that's Beyonce. 
Oh, that's uh, Carmen Diaz. Carmen Diaz, yeah. Uh, yeah. She was in oh, she's Night and Day and all that. She's with Tom Cruise uh, changing oh. clips in her gun. Oh, uh, here's one holding a gun to to the to a no kid's more head. Names. Oh my God. Stanley Shut Tucci. Up, huh? Yeah, look at that, holding a oh gun to gosh. a kid's head. Oh my Yeah, she is. It's not too soon. Unbelievable. Um. It's too late. Now is the time. What do I do? I just... Yeah. Look right, at if that. You're, oh my well, we gosh. If, I, I don't want to watch anymore. Can we turn no, it's really, it's really <laughs> nasty. Yeah, Christina Applegate. Zoe yeah. Deschanel. No more lists. Yeah. No more. Who they might have been. No more. Oh, that's uh, yeah. the office guy. If we had just done something yesterday. If we had it's just time. done something we can yesterday. Do better than this. <laughs> oh we my do gosh. Than this. Oh, I can't look. It's time. It's yeah. time. Oh, gosh. It's time for our leaders to act. Do you, uh, yeah. It's time for our actors right to now. leave. The lead. <laughs> actors to leave. That's the lead. <laughs> okay, what you're looking at. What, you, well, enough. If you're, enough, 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 enough. Yeah, All right, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. Midgets in there, too, with guns. Midgets with guns. Then you know you're in enough. trouble. Enough. No, 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 enough. no, no. Little people Little with people. guns. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, the, 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 the theme is enough, enough, enough. Yeah, yeah, enough of you guys blowing away kids, blowing away people, blowing away everything else. But, but you know, oh, my God, you know, we, we got to ban guns, but we can use them on TV and blow away people. And we can have armed guards around us to stop our fans who want to get next to us. Right. And we can do all that crazy stuff. And we can take our our own guns and go out to the range and shoot up people. And we could be the models for the video can, games that you kids are playing that are inspiring you to go do these do, do, shootings do, 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 to begin with. Yeah, right? your voiceovers, your acting, yeah. your creds and everything like and that. And the lights came back on. And the lights on. come back on. Right? <laughs> you know, what, what, what's such, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Oh. Not as I show you what to do. I mean, yeah. th that that's, how how bad is that that type of leadership? I mean, well, it's not leadership, and and we shouldn't expect them to be leaders. They are actors. Let me tell everybody so what we're we doing. Look to them or it's, listen to them on anything, anyway. Anything. It's five twenty-eight on Friday afternoon, uh, Which means January fourth. Almost happy hour. Yeah, Tom Trento here with CJ and Mark. We are uh, winding hour. down here and showing the hypocrisy today of. Some of the um, individuals of influence in the United States of America. We started with uh, the um, the former actor known as Al Gore. Uh, <laughs> ac he acted as the vice president of the United States. He just sold his company for half a billion dollars to Muslim terrorists. Eh, what's the big deal about that? And then uh, now we just moved into this hypocrisy regarding um, actors trying to tell Americans, particularly law-abiding Americans who have who own weapons and don't kill people with them, use them for self-defense. They're trying. They, the actors in Hollywood, which is make believe by definition, which is make believe by definition, <laughs> trying to tell. You know what? If I were an actor in Hollywood and somebody said, "We need you to be on a public service announcement because you have such influence." I would have said, "Look, guys, you're taking this, you're taking this gig way too seriously. We're actors, okay? We have nothing to say about anything. We we do funny stuff." Somebody or writes the dialogue for <laughs> us by definition because we are actors. And and then a guy tells us how to say it, and then you give us a lot of money, <laughs> and then somebody else films it, and then you pay. And you, you so so and you and what do I have to say about anybody? I mean, I have nothing to say about anything unless you write a script, and then you tell me what to say, and then I'll say it, okay? And then you give me a really big paycheck. You got to pay me some money. Yeah. So what the hell are actors doing anywhere saying anything to anybody? <laughs> I know. And then then we see the video that they're there slaughtering people with guns, and we and we're supposed to go okay. We slaughter bad ideas like this. So don't be influenced by these people. And don't get filmed even in comedy, shooting anybody with uh, with weapons, okay? Right. If that's your morality, then that's your morality. Oh, God. But then, you know. All right. Here's another little what do you handgun got? update. What's that? The Chicago homicide rate spikes. 
by handgun violence. Right. Okay. But, but aren't handguns banned in Chicago? They, they Chicago, are. Of course they are. Chicago has the most absolutely restrictive handgun. I mean, you've tried to go through Chicago with a handgun. Tell, tell, tell them a story about that. I mean, you, you, you. Not oh, me. Huh? Oh, I, thought, I thought you were when you actually, you know, uh, when, I'm sorry. <laughs> but go ahead. No, 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 no. We don't No, I mean, back, 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 back when, so. <laughs> no, I. I somebody else I, in I, another city and another town. Right. No, that it was, was, that wasn't true. It was, it was, I knew. Oh, it. there was a story. The story you were telling me about somebody else. That, that was it. And uh, they they tried to get through. There's a couple states they said that uh, are very difficult. New Jersey, New York, Illinois. You know, all those states, and they all have high crime rates. Um, yeah, it's crazy stuff. All it, Democrat states, by the isn't way. Isn't that interesting how that yeah, works? Yeah, all Democrat states where where guns are outlawed. Yeah. So only outlaws have guns. Oh, that's cute. That's an old one, but it's still a cute yeah. one. I like okay, that. Okay, I haven't heard it in a while. Say it and again it for those fresh. who <laughs> say it again for those who are just tuning in. CJ has a great little uh, aphorism here. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Where guns are outlawed, only outlaws have guns. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, yes. Can I go home now? No, 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 no. Have... no we have to show another minutes to go. We have to show another <laughs> outlaw. Uh, all right, so 888-565-1470 if you want to weigh in on guns and the hypocrisy of uh, Hollywood. I or got something. if you want to gun in on the weight that uh, there you go. You this message that. carries. On Monday, we're going to deal with um, the most admired woman in the world. Who do you think the most admired woman in the world is? Oh, uh, Condoleezza Rice. This no, person, I don't think so. This this is the seventeenth uh, time, yeah, that this person has been um, awarded with the most admired woman in the world. Yeah, uh, over the past twenty years, seventeen times. Yeah, still is this year. Barbara Bush, and um, no. we will. My my good friend uh, and colleague with Sharia, the threat to America. Diana West wrote an article yesterday, and uh, the most admired woman in the world. And the most admired woman is? Tune in on Monday, and we will tell you. But her first name starts with Hillary. Okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> we will tell you all about Hillary and how Diana West eviscerates Hillary as someone who should be the least admired woman in is the she world. Hillary, Hillary? Pillory's Hillary. We're going to do that on Monday because it's so Who, very, very good. According to the National Enquirer or the Star or one of those magazines, has has brain cancer and has been update, um, kidnapped by aliens and... or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe both. Yeah. Uh, the six people moving into uh, Steve Emerson's report on the infiltration into the White House of the Muslim Brotherhood. We know that. We've written on that and spoken on that quite a bit. Yeah. But Emerson has uh, gotten his hands on an Egyptian magazine, had it translated. The Egyptian magazine is called Ros El Yosef uh, and uh, has a complete translation. And it basically says that from that uh, six Muslim brothers from a position have entered the White House – and turned it from a position hostile to Islamic groups and organizations in the world to the largest and most important supporter of the Muslim Brotherhood, these six individuals. I'm going to read their names, and we'll talk about them on Monday. Six people include Arif Ali Khan, Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security for Policy Development. Number two, Mohammed el we know about him, member of Homeland Security Advisory Council, Rashid Hussein, U.S. Special Envoy to the Organization of Islamic Conference. Salam al Mariadi, we know him, co founder of MPAC, Muslim Public Affairs Council. Imam Mohammed Majid, we know him, President of the Islamic Society of North America. And Ibu Patel, a member of President Obama's Advisory Council on Faith Based Neighborhood Partnerships. Do you believe this crap? Can you believe yes, this? Yes, I do believe yeah, it. I do. Well, we're going to get into the, the details of six Muslim brothers that are very close to the president 
that have infiltrated the United All of these people should be arrested and tried for subversion. Okay, but who would arrest them? Nobody. nobody. Maybe nobody. us, citizens arrest. How about that? Well, well, well here's the point. Is, all right, is we... there anybody left <clears throat> in this government or in any of the agencies of this government – who is willing to actually defend the people and this country no. against its enemies, no. domestic no. enemies? No. You know our friend Paul, it's... General Paul Valley and Boykin and those guys? Right. You should talk to them about this. They go through the roof because they say there's a whole core of flag officers that are serving right now that ought to march in, <laughs> you know, and, and, and exercise some sort of... Uh, uh, restraint and stopping the uh, the the infiltration and the abuse. Speak out, expose, do something. They're all silent because they're all looking at their careers under and Obama. All your friends all in the FBI. They're, they're all, all they're all afraid. They're all afraid. And it's 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 sad you know. because you look at it. You're right. all afraid. Or, then quit your job and go home. Yep. Amen. All right. As bad as we knew under it was under okay. George. To me. Well, just one second, because this – I'm so steamed about this issue, okay, and I know I've, I've talked about it before. But to me, these people who are serving in a uniform or serving with a badge or took an oath on the Constitution to defend the Constitution and the American people, and they – are no better for taking a paycheck, for shutting their eyes and keeping their mouths closed than Al Gore is for taking a hundred million of five hundred million from Al Jazeera. They are no better. I, I'm with you. You know, I mean, no, you, well, no argument from us. I was saying a minute ago is we knew how bad it was as far as under George Bush, and under under previous administrations who were Republican, who we thought, you know, would be more attuned, who actually wanted to go after, you know, the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. And we say, oh, my God, it, it, you know, it's bad. And then we look here at this, what's going on now. It, I mean, I don't understand how much worse it can get. Oh, oh well, what a beautiful segue. To, I guess we're going to find out how much worse what it can get. What a beautiful get. segue, because yeah. we're going to find out right now. See how this works together? Yeah. Yeah, how it's like can a this be kind of thing? How can this be any worse? Well, one of the net benefits of six Muslim brothers infiltrating the White House is the influence placed upon President Obama to act in a particular way toward a group called the Muslim Brotherhood. And if you haven't noticed, folks. President Obama has a BFF in the president of Egypt, Mohammed Morsi, and they are just joined at the hip, man. They are just two buds having a blast remaking the Middle East. You have not heard a word out of President Obama regarding President Morsi's complete takeover of Egypt through Sharia. You've heard Cynthia here talk about it, Andy Boston talk yeah. about it. Let's take a uh, let's take a look back. See, let's take a look. See back. Um, oh, I don't know. Let's take a look. See at President Mohammed Morsi as he was unplugged. Oh, I think this was thirty years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. How about <laughs> two years ago? Yeah. Let's look back. Two years ago, uh, President. Mohammed Morsi, before he was the president, you see, here's the situation. He was a leading Muslim brother in Egypt for many, many years. And um, uh, when the brotherhood asserted itself after Mubarak, or as Mubarak was being overthrown, the number one guy was a guy by the name of Salik, I think his last name was. Um, and all of a sudden, a tremendous amount of controversy uh, was are we ready for this? Yeah. Uh, just pause it for a second. Tremendous amount of contra- controversy over the number one Muslim Brotherhood guy for the presidency. So they grabbed Morsi and said, "You're going to be the president." They didn't do too much uh, research on his past. Take a look at Morsi, just no, about two trans- years ago. They're going to have to translate it for Yeah, you. yeah. Okay. We want you to. I'll read it. <laughs> 
بضاعة الوقت وتضييع الفرص الصهاينة يكتسبون وقتا ويأخذون فرصا والفلسطينيون عربا ومسلمين تضيع عليهم الفرص وتضيع عليهم أوقاتهم These feudal Israeli the Zionist by time and game uh, could you freeze it for a second? No. As the Palestinians, the Arabs, and the Muslims lose time and opportunities, this is more so like speaking at his desk, just doing like a little YouTube thing. And they get nothing out of it. We, we can, can see, see again. Okay, you read again. Okay. We can see how this dream has dissipated. This dream has always been an illusion. Right. Froze. Yeah. It's stuck. Sorry. It's Okay, well, it's not coming to me. There it goes. Yet some Palestinians who erroneously believe that their enemies might give them something. This, quote, Palestinian authority was created by the Zionist and American enemies for the sole purpose of opposing the will of the Palestinian people and its interests. No reasonable person can expect any progress on this track. Either you accept the Zionists and everything they want, or else it is war. This is what these occupiers of the land of Palestine know. These bloodsuckers who attack the Palestinians. <laughs> these warmongers, the descendants of apes and pigs. We should employ all forms of resistance against them. There should be military resistance within the land of Palestine against those criminal Zionists who attack Palestine and the Palestinians. There should also be political resistance and economic resistance through a boycott, as well as by supporting the resistance fighters. This should be the practice of the Muslims and the Arabs outside Palestine. They should support the resistance fighters and besiege the Zionists wherever they are. None of the Arab or Muslim peoples and regimes should have dealings with them. Pressure should be exerted upon them. They must not be given any opportunity and must not stand on any Arab or Islamic land. They must be driven out of our countries. Therefore, these negotiations must stop once and for all. Well, there's more, but the, the main gist of it, you know, was right in the part of it where it said there is no, they call them blood-suckering, war-mongering, the uh, well, They're, they're talking pigs. about Americans and Jews is what, what he's talking, talking about. about. Yeah, they're yeah, talking says, about the And Jews, actually, the, yeah. the, the descendant of apes and pigs is, is in the Quran. Is actually, and apes are... Are the uh, Jews, Jews and Jews, the pigs and the are Christians? Christians. Yep. I mean that, that he, they say that right in the Quran, and the, so that's Quran. And, and the Christian Crusaders are the Americans. So uh, Mohammed Morsi, the president of Egypt, the guy who now runs the fourth largest military in in the world, I think it is one of them, up there, with a lot of uh, Abrams A1 M1 tanks, and he's getting a delivery this month of um, twenty new F16s. This is what this guy believes. He believes that Americans and Jews are Zionists and ought to be repelled, fought, resisted, and driven out of Israel. Completely out. No Jews, no Americans in Israel. Um, that, that's strictly according to Islamic uh, doctrine. I mean, there, there's nothing – I mean, I don't see anything shocking about it because this. I know what this guy is. But they also must be dealt with wherever they are, not just yep. – in right, Israel. Right, right. Exactly. Now let's complete the circle for the audience. Israel doesn't actually exist. Let's it's, complete the circle for the audience. It's all Palestine to him. Yeah. Well, here's the here's the completion, folks, of uh, the Trento Vision show today. We started out by telling you about Vice President Al Gore, former Vice President, selling his uh, his goofy network to um, the country of Qatar and uh, sold Current TV, which was a useless nothing. For five hundred million dollars to Al Jazeera, essentially a um, Islamic front for an influence operation worldwide, he did that. Then we also showed you how six, how the Egyptians have said six Muslim brothers have infiltrated the White House to such an extent that the position that the White House had of the Islamic movement 
the brotherhood used to be hostile now it's one of support oh we wonder how that happens we introduced hillary a little bit ago and we'll talk about her on monday but i think mark said that hillary um, has an aide called huma abedin are you starting to see the big picture then we look at the president of egypt mohammed morsi two years ago an avowed ardent opponent and and jew hater american hater who now enjoys the united states support as the president of egypt how does all this happen in a sane world our peace partner our new peace partner in the middle east he helped resolve the gaza conflict recently the eight day conflict with his it's through the influence operation of the muslim brotherhood in the white house is how you get this violent and, and vitriolic guy being a peace partner with the United States of America. Now, We're exposing that well, right now. Now understand, like, Morsi was a graduate of the University of Southern California, got his Ph.D. there, was integrated, learned everything about American culture, integrated, oh, my God, you know. Two of his kids were born, born here. here. And, oh, my God, they just come over here, they understand who we are, they'll, they'll love us, they'll understand we don't want to hurt them, oh, my God, da 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 da, da. And what's the first thing he does when he goes back home? Becomes the head the of dictator. a Jew-hating, Sharia-implementing dictator from hell. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is this guy is, is Hitler on steroids. But let's be realistic about one you know? thing also, because this article is citing the six people placed in the White House. That's just the six people That's they can prove. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Could you believe that there are only six? No. No. No, no. Okay. We, we, that's and the that's good news. That's not even counting. That's not even counting the revolving guest list mm-hmm. of who's coming and going out of the White House that we're not even paying for. And now, all, oh my God! All of a sudden, we have Al Jazeera TV inside the U.S. How'd that happen, Tom? Isn't that interesting? Now, how uh, Al Jazeera? You know, you, you, if you're if you're in uh, if you're in training. As an intelligence officer in any of the Arab nations, you got to say when, when they say where would you, where would you folks like to serve, <laughs> right? You got to say, "Are you yeah. kidding me, yeah. America, USA, yeah. USA?" USA. Do you want to go to Nairobi <laughs> or you want to go to Washington? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and where are you going to send the best ones at? Okay, and, and, and you, you know, know they're going to yeah. say, you know, they're going to say the the, the 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 student will say. Well, what's mm-hmm. the toughest thing about going to America? Mm-hmm. I mean, in America, everybody wants to go there. What's the toughest thing? Toughest thing is going to have to be dealing with uh, uh, the Trento people and the, and the Gaffney <laughs> and nothing, people yeah. and the Geller people and the Spencer people. And, you know, they're the, they're the toughest ones. No, the well, government, and the, so and the, the FBI, biggest, don't worry about that the stuff. The biggest thing you got to do with those guys is you got to shut down their free speech. So you got to yeah. make them – you, you got to go after them on the PC level. you got to mm-hmm. go to them. you you got to make them Islamophobic. Interfaith them to hell, you and know. Yeah, you gotta, you got to get into the media. Them. But really, the, the biggest, greatest <laughs> obstacle – for an agent coming over from a, a pro-Islamic country, is us people yeah. fighting the counter jihad movement? It's it's not the government, no. it's not the military, it's not it's any not, of that because you got you got we're you got the killer people. the killer of thirteen soldiers and the and he wounded thirty one thirty two others yeah. who doesn't want to shave his freaking Sharia beard yeah. and we have a six month debate about whether or not we should. Tie the guy on the ground and cut his beard off, will you, man? Yeah, I don't know. Let's let that case go to the Supreme Court. You know? Unbelievable. Let's just wait I'll serve if I'm an that. enemy of the of the United States. I'll serve in the United States because it's easy picking out there right yeah. now. You think if John Wayne was the president, this situation would exist? Or, or even you even go back to Eisenhower. Do you think this would exist? Or even Kennedy? Do you think this would exist? This is just yeah. Uh, even Kennedy wouldn't do it. No, yeah. when he wasn't playing with the ladies, I saw a little documentary yeah. on him last night. But, but uh, uh, he no, wouldn't. He yeah, wouldn't. But he was but a he war did hero. Take time yeah. off from his fun to yes. uh, to take care to fight of the some bad guys. Do you think Truman would? At least he knew who the enemies were to him. Do you him think back FDR then. would? Well, I don't know. You know? It, I don't know about that. Okay, well, the thing about it is FDR made some strange bad fellows. But, yeah, he did. But, uh, yeah. But the point being is 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 the paradigm shift as far as what is going on over here as far as the influence operation is 
There is no resistance other than us. There's no resistance. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the guys who want to go blow themselves up. Oh, yeah, we got the FBI. We, we got something in place we for got that. On the I.O. And I'm talking, yep. I'm yeah. talking about, the, about on the counterintelligence, the, you know, the going against the influence operation. You know, we're it. That's really sad. Yeah, we, we have uh, assets in place <laughs> through the FBI and through others in terms of, um, you know, upper-level espionage. Uh, but on the cultural mandate to um, to defeat the United States, the, the stuff that's obvious in front of you, it's invisible in front of you, where where these people are doing it out in the open, everybody's clueless. We're the only ones that see this stuff. It's hey, amazing. How many times have I told you, Tom? On the way to the apple tree, we're tripping over watermelons. I mean, it's just yeah. so it is so we're, we're, we're doing I'm it just. Yeah. <laughs> mixing his metaphors. No, no, no. I understand. No, what I'm saying is, I'm, we're tripping over the fruit, going after the fruit, and 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 we can't get there half the time because there's so much, there's so much, you know, jihadi activity in the way that's right out there in front of us, and we're not even really so many ideological yeah, we're targets. Not even looking for it and we're not even we're really get, going yeah. that deep inside of it. I mean, it's just so in front of you, and they and they say it. Okay, okay. Look, we got a couple of minutes left. We're driving everybody crazy. They're going, oh. We, we, I'm going in my closet, my prayer closet for the weekend, and you know, <laughs> zoning out. Is there any hope? It is the waking up of the knowledge of what the root core is, and I, the thing about it is, you don't have to have a lot of people saying the truth once it is the truth, because people will understand what the truth is eventually. You just got to keep mm-hmm. saying it, tell them, tell them what it is, tell them again, then tell them what it is again, and eventually the truth will set you free. And, okay. you know, it, 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 in a roundabout way, because one and one equals two eventually. Uh, CJ, oh, any like hope? That. I like that. Yeah. Is no, there any we're hope? going to be here and we're going to keep telling the truth. And people who want to hear the truth are going to find us right. and we're going to rally them. And that's it. And that's what 2013 is all about. All right. I, I would say, uh, being realistic, being a realist, I would say there is no hope. <clears throat> There's no hope. For everyone over 40, okay? I think if you're over 40 years old, there's no hope that in our lifetime we will turn this around. And and I think I think that could be said in our studies earlier, our material earlier this week. We dealt with um, Washington crossing the Delaware and, mm-hmm. and Lincoln, um, you know, fighting uh, slavery. Uh, there, there's oftentimes a generation is called to uh, to sacrifice itself for the sake of the next generation. Uh, World War II was that. I think I think everybody over 40, we're, we're not going to see the solution to the Islamic Jihad in America in the next 10 years, 20 years. But we're fighting right now for our kids, our grandkids, those folks. That's right. And that's worth fighting for. So if you get out of your mind that, oh, we got to beat this thing tomorrow. Right. These are 1,400-year-old movement. That uses uh, death and destruction and 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 all other stuff to stop us. So uh, we're fighting for the next for yeah. the guys coming behind. That's what us. I told people after the election. Mm-hmm. I said you won't see it, no, but you have it. to do it. How can you not do it? What but do you, you want to do? You, you want to adjust... go to bed and just put the covers over your head for the next thirty years? And if, but you, you, if you adjust your psychology to the fact that you're you're dedicating and sacrificing your life for the people behind you yeah then then you go then this is a doable. positive thing yeah, yeah. exactly and you know and then there's people out there that don't have any kids that aren't doing it for that reason or, or for it's it's just because it's, the kids anybody's it's, kids anybody, you know? yeah. anybody yeah. Anybody's it's, kids. it's just the right it's thing Sandy to Hook's do kids. because you know you've been you've, <laughs> yeah. you've been blessed to live in a country that's given Amen. you a lot and and you should and there is some obligation to for that to be your calling. And we'll end this week on that great note by yep. Mark, and we will see Thank you all you. on Monday.